Greek mythology is practically everywhere, and it's no wonder why. From the stories of ancient gods punishing humans for their hubris, then being punished themselves for the very same thing, or the stories of ancient heroes fighting monsters and learning of their lineage, Greek mythology shows us as viewers that even in a world full of monsters, gods, and heroes, everyone is still human. I mean, even in the story of Medusa, she is a human before becoming the slithering gorgon that turns people to stone. For the time that Greek cult worship was the dominant belief system of Western civilization, it was varied among its followers, having stories that helped many given their region or period understand the world and the unknown throughout it. Thankfully, nowadays, we don't have to worry about that too much. And there's even a franchise in the gaming space that has made their presence known, sharing with us a personal telling of these stories. But how influential was this game and its subsequent sequels to the mythology that inspired it? Did it alter the entire genre, or did it give more people the desire to learn more about the ancient gods and the stories surrounding them? Let's take a look today into how God of War helped shape Greek mythology as we know it today. Before we get into it, we need to go back in time a bit. Way back in time. To the point of antiquity, where all of our favorite stories take place, and we can answer the question of, what is Greek mythology actually? Here in ancient Greece, the people followed a collective worship of a pantheon that was passed down thousands of years prior from Africa and Asia Minor, though the worship of this pantheon was vast among the tribes that lived in what was to be Greece at the time, they were all relatively the same. Gods like Zeus, Hera, and Hades still existed as chief gods, but the beliefs and the stories surrounding them were different depending on the people who worshipped them. For instance, the story of Hades stealing away Persephone and making her his bride is all the same story across Greece, but each telling may have some difference. In one interpretation, Hades makes a deal with Zeus to kidnap Persephone, while in another, Hades outright steals her away upon seeing her. This shows that there isn't a singular telling of the stories of the Greek gods, especially in the fact that the stories evolved over time, but more on that in a bit. For the Greeks, the myths that they told were stories to explain the past or explain why things were the way that they were. Why are we able to make and control fire? Well, Prometheus, the Titan, stole it for us. On top of all this, much of Greek myth was told through orators, in a poetic sense. Poems that shared exciting and yet moralistic tales of human woe and human existence. Like how Poseidon refused Odysseus and his crew from returning home for 20 years because of their hubris. Telling these tall tales through boisterous, poetic speaking and singing allowed many to learn more about their own gods and goddesses, helping the Greeks to continually pass down the stories for generations. Which brings up our next point. As much of these stories and myths of the gods were told orally, the stories passed down changed little by little. Just as mentioned before, with the differences of story points depending upon region, so too did the moments of a story change with each passing generation. This is especially apparent in the time of Rome's rise to power and adoption of the Greek gods and their myths and legends. An example of this would be again the story of Medusa, as with Hesiod's telling in his collection Theogony, he explains that Medusa and Poseidon, called the dark-haired one here, lay with one another in a field of flowers. However, some 700 years later in Ovid's telling, he explains that the god Neptune, the Roman equivalent to Poseidon, had violated Medusa in the temple of Minerva. Though the story shares the same beats as Hesiod's, 
it still provides differences due to the time and place of Ovid's writing. As time went on, Greek mythology was given a new perspective as Christianity began to rise in prominence across Europe, presenting those curious about the tales of the past with stories that they could equate to the Christian stories that they themselves followed in their everyday lives. This is especially apparent with the painting The Birth of Venus by Botticelli in the mid-1480s, as the goddess of beauty is presented in a way akin to how Eve is created and presented to Adam in the Christian creation story. It's ultimately at this point that the Greek pantheon and the Greek myths begin to take on a more idealized approach. What I mean by this is that whenever the gods and heroes are portrayed in art or in other stories, they are depicted in their most idealized version of themselves. The goddess Venus, for instance, has a nearly flawless complexion and proportions for her body. As well, even the painting of Bacchus by Michelangelo in 1596 shares a fit and fair complexioned god of wine and debauchery. This trend of crafting and evolving Greek mythology within entertainment and art would continue on even into the 20th century within film and TV, with movies like 1963's Jason and the Argonauts, bringing in new audiences into the world of Greek myth and legend with critical acclaim. All this is done while not only depicting the gods and heroes involved as ideally as possible, but also in a more human sense. It's no surprise that Greek mythology has made an impact on the world in the way that it has with its heroes and gods traveling the world to fight monsters, damsels being saved, and even the occasional moral story helping many to understand life and the world around them. It's thanks to this progress and evolution of perspective that we have the greatest influence on modern day Greek mythology, God of War. Released on March 22nd, 2005 for PlayStation 2, God of War was received as an instant success, selling over a million copies by the end of the first year as it grossed a whopping $43 million in just the United States alone. Needless to say, people were loving this game upon its release, and I was personally one of them, excitedly playing through the story and learning more about the Greek pantheon and the many stories it connected with. Speaking of, the story is set in ancient Greece and has you controlling Kratos, known as the Ghost of Sparta. He is extraordinarily powerful, being capable of tearing apart his enemies in the most brutal ways possible and expressing his desires in a more intimate fashion. In the game, we learn that Kratos is a servant of the goddess of war and wisdom, Athena as he tries to redeem himself from the atrocities of his past. Wanting revenge against the other god of war, Ares, Kratos learns of the pivotal Pandora's box, and that through it, he will have the power to kill a god. Lost in the labyrinth and chained to the back of the titan Kronos, Kratos climbs to the temple of Pandora. This is where much of the game actually takes place, as within this labyrinth, Kratos will not only fight formidable beasts like the Minotaur and Harpies, but solve intricate puzzles to gain access to new abilities and tools, allowing Kratos to get closer to the tool to kill a god. However, upon collecting the box, Kratos is killed by Ares, subsequently sending him into Hades with the box being taken away to the god of war. Thankfully, Kratos fights his way through the underworld and is able to climb back up from the depths and back to Athens where he makes his final stand against the god who forced him into servitude and into killing his family. After brutally killing Ares, Kratos is able to take the title of God of War and forge his own path of war and devastation. 
Taking inspiration from the same camera style and action gameplay as Devil May Cry, God of War uses its fixed camera to help the player understand the size and personality of the ancient Greek world and the legends surrounding it. As you travel through the desert, you have to follow the mesmerizing calls and songs of the sirens. And even when first entering Athens, the camera zooms out to show the size of Kratos' task and the design of the ancient city-state. What sets this game apart from the tales of Greek myth before it is just how visceral and real this world feels. As much of the depictions before the series release showed a truly fantastical ancient world with its idealized and colorful depiction of ancient Greece. With God of War, you take the reins in exploring the streets of Athens and even battle against Cerberus one on one. Along with this was the fact that the series didn't portray the ancient world in a colorful manner, but with a dull and more subtle tone. This way, the player feels the dread of war, forcing them to feel the dirt under Kratos' feet and the smell of blood in battle. Following this, God of War 2 in 2007 and God of War 3 in 2010 played to this same style in both gameplay and perspective of the ancient Greek world, all while expanding on the wonders and stories of the ancient world, portraying the brutality that Greek mythology had become so synonymous with. As parents eat their children, then have them ripped from their body, as well as having torturous punishment for gift giving. Along with this was the fact that many of the characters were represented in either a hyper-realistic way or were exaggerated in such a way as to fully emphasize their power and divinity, with characters like Hercules being a giant of a man as the god of strength. And yes, I know his name is wrong in this as well with Helios, the personification of the sun, being able to make his body shine as bright as the sun. These characters and others like them help us understand the broader perspective into their personality and prowess. This newfound understanding and interest in the games supplied viewers of the time with a more in-depth view of the world of ancient Greece, allowing us as gamers to explore new and interesting characters of Greek myth, and learn more about them. This brings up our question from before, how does this series ultimately inspire the Greek myths and legends that we know today? With today's world, it's no wonder how Greek mythology inspired so many things we see or deal with in our daily lives. From a shoe company using the goddess of victory's name to even certain intimate protections taking on the name of soldiers of Asia Minor. But starting from God of War's release in 2005, Greek mythology has come to see a renaissance of inspirations, retellings, and even more and better stories of the ancient world. Most notable are the games that followed the God of War series, with games like Darksiders, which sees the Horsemen of War battle angels and demons in a quest for redemption in a bloody and gritty apocalyptic world, as well as the game Apotheon, which sees the main character fight through a war-torn city along a Greek pithos. These games, and the many others like them, coming out after God of War, were all created in part due to the series, not just because of its visceral gameplay, but for its mythical retellings and imaginative weavings of Greek mythology into the story, letting players grow in their curiosity and inspiration to learn what else can be explored within the Greek world. This is even apparent in movies such as 2011's Immortals, in 2014's Hercules, and even 2017's Wonder Woman, all of which see hardcore action sequences that are taken straight from the quick time events God of War had come to be known for. Even within the literary world, books like The Silence of the Girls, Circe, and A Thousand Ships all tell the stories of their respective myths and legends, 
but instead from a feminine point of view. This has actually taken more prominence in recent years with the now famous look into the story of, again, Medusa being saved by Athena by turning her into a Gorgon to stay any unwanted advances. This thought on femininity is more than likely due to the hypermasculinity that God of War became famous for, as Kratos is nothing but muscle throughout the entire game along with many of the female characters being hyperfeminine. This aspect is something that many have marred the game for by expressing a keen interest in appealing to a more male audience. However, this series expression marked not only an interest into the Greek myth genre for many, but as well marked a desire for others to create a more down-to-earth and realistic story within the ancient world. God of War has helped establish a rebirth of knowledge and exploration into the ancient world for many. And just as it took inspiration from the Greek myths, in turn, it helped Greek mythology be inspiring for others, including myself. Just as Greek myth has evolved from the ancient stories from Africa and Asia Minor to the classics, then from that to the Roman tellings, then to the Christian perspective of the Renaissance, Greek mythology has evolved just as well from the creation of the God of War franchise, supplying new readers, viewers, and gamers, and even creators with different perspectives into the genre, marking the thoughts of Greek myth in today's world as being grounded in reality with a sprinkle of brutality and fantasy. One example of this is that we no longer view the underworld as this horrific lair meant for only condemning the dead, but instead as a realm of those whose lives were lost and who roam about listlessly. Though the first God of War depicts this realm in a hellish way with rivers of blood, fleshy platforms, and blades everywhere, this was retconned and corrected within the third installment and the other spin-offs, showing us that this realm was really a neutral plane of existence, giving us the viewers that sense of realism of the underworld. So thinking about this is like asking the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it just a general and continual interest in Greek mythology that influenced the game itself and our modern perspective? Or was this renewal of interest and evolution of Greek myth due to the creation of God of War and its subsequent games? Ultimately, this question is up for debate. I personally believe that without the series, we wouldn't have seen the most amazing books, movies, or even games that we have in the past almost two decades. But what is your take on the God of War series being the catalyst for Greek mythology's evolution? Do you side with a thought, or do you see something else that I may have missed? Let's create a discussion in the comments, and for more on mythology and gaming, make sure that you're subscribed so you can learn more. I appreciate you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.